Hey everybody, good morning. Marty Mazzori here. Friday, May 3rd, 2019. Going to update the chart for you. Haven't done that in a few days. And this will be this week's weekly message as well. I'm going to touch on a few things, but I promise not to take too long in the process. Here's that familiar chart of the S&P 500. It's the daily one-year chart. Each bar is for one day. Uh, we've been spending a lot of time on this chart the last few months. As you can see, we are bouncing off of these levels right in here. I, I said on the way up that this is likely going to pose some pretty stiff resistance. And right now, uh, the market is doing everything it can to try to penetrate that level. Now we're in earnings season. Earnings beats have been substantial, meaning the number of companies that have beat analysts' expectations going in. And those expectations were ratcheted lower, but that's okay. The beats have been impressive. And the revenue beats, which I think are even more important, haven't been stellar, but they've been improving a bit of late. So the earnings season looks fine. I think that's helping the market out quite a bit. Moving averages look good. 200-day moving average just keeps getting better. This is a nice setup, the 50 on top. Market had dropped below the 10-day moving average, which has been very important short-term support this whole time. As I speak, it's trading above it by 10 points or so. So that's a good positive sign on the near term. In terms of volume, on balance volume looks constructed. We have a flat move here, but we have kind of an upward slope in the on balance volume. So I can say that on a net basis, stocks have been accumulated to some degree in here. Uh, again, contrast that with this very bearish look when the market was flat back in, up in here. So that's a good sign. What's not as supportive is my momentum oscillator here, the moving average convergence divergence. That looks very much like this period back in here. And right now we have that short-term sell signal, which is where the signal line uh, is breached to the downside by the MACD line. That happened here as well. That's not as important as the... Uh, as the slope, which is a bearish divergence right now. Basically, what that speaks to is just waning momentum. As we get to these highs, makes some sense. Doesn't mean the market's going to come crashing down, um, but it's not as nearly as bullish a sign as we saw all the way up into these levels right up in here. Just to bring you up to date on just some of the things that keep me guarded on a near-term basis, things like the oscillator here, uh, like my concerns over geopolitics that I think are keeping the market somewhat at bay right around these levels, at least for now. I showed you recently the short interest on SPY, the huge exchange traded fund that tracks the S&P 500 index um, it, it, at a very, very low level. So there's some what I would call complacency among folks who would normally be shorting stocks if they were worried that stocks were about to fall. And when I layer on the S&P 500, what I've done here is turn the short interest line red. The white line is the S&P 500. So as we go back um, to the beginning of 2018, notice where short interest was. There just wasn't a lot of people betting on the market fall. Well, as, uh, as things began to develop, it's interesting, as the market was rising, folks were beginning to bet on a market decline and sure enough, they got it. We got a 10% correction early in the year in here. Back here, as the market was peaking, notice short interest was beginning to rise. Sure enough, we had that big decline there. I showed you this chart when this was at a peak here and I said that get little good news and you're gonna see some massive short covering because basically what a short does is sell something on loan having to buy it back at some point later. They expect that they're selling it at a higher price, buying it at a lower price, and then pocketing the difference. So if the market moves against them, again, they have to buy it back later. They can lose an infinite amount of money if the market rises because they'd have to buy it at higher and higher prices. So you get a little good news and the market spikes upward. You get covering of those shorts, which means now they have to buy stocks, which just exacerbates the upside. Well, right here, we're at a very low level and you can see where the market is here. I'm not suggesting that we're in for some great rollover like we've had here, but this is not nearly as supportive 
of continued gains in the market as it was up here. And it suggests to me that, yeah, there's some fuel for some selling of stocks as these folks go short, which of course can bring stock prices low. So I see some complacency here. That's a reason to be somewhat cautious on a near-term basis. Maybe, maybe be careful when you're putting money to work. Certainly not reason to go selling stocks if you're a long-term investor and conditions are fine, like I believe they are still, and, uh, and you can allow yourself some volatility. Another one that I shared with you recently was short interest on the volatility index, the VIX index. It tracks implied volatility on near the money SPX or S&P 500 options. Um, very short. Futures traders who are trading the VIX are just betting volatility stays very low or even goes lower. Kind of a dangerous place to be. You can see here coming into 2018 strongly, futures traders were short the VIX. Here's what happened to the market as they started to go long the VIX. Here we were right at the peak here last September. And you can see as things began to unwind, um, what tends to happen here. And then again, here we are, and that may be even be a record. A lot of complacency, just folks thinking that things are going to stay the way they are or even get markedly better. Maybe they are, but when you have this kind of money on one side of the boat, you have the potential for a little rocking of that boat. Lastly, want to talk about individual investors, more of the sentiment kind of stuff, levels of complacency. This is the weekly American Association of Individual Investors Bear Index. So to ask their members each week, very important, very watched indicator, how you feel about the next six months. Well, presently 24.4% of those surveyed are bearish. As, as you can see here, historically, I've got a 10 year chart. That's a very low level of bearishness. So let's just go back and see what's happened in the market coming off of these levels. So here we are at a level a little bit below where we are now. Here's where the market was when bearishness hit that level. Here's the peak. And here's where the market was at that peak. And you can see what it did during that time period. Here's another bottom in bearishness. Here's where the market was as folks became bearish. Here's what the market had done from trough to peak. Here we are again, low bearishness below 25%. Here's where the market was. Here's the peak. Here's an exception to my rule here, right? Market actually went up. Here's a low. Here's a peak from this point to here. Kind of flat before it rolled over a bit. Here's a very deep low, deep trough in bearishness. Here's the peak, and of course the market is right there. So pretty dramatic drop there in 2015. Folks got complacent again, right on the line. Here we are. Here's where it peaked. Here's where the market ended up. Here's the low right just as the market was peaking back here in the beginning of 2018. And then at the next peak, as you can see, stocks had dropped quite substantially. We never got down this low again, but we got close right here as the market was mounting its way higher. Here's where bear sentiment was right at the peak in September. This trough to this peak, of course, was almost a 20% decline. As you can see here, folks, historically speaking, the bears are somewhat non-existent. This looks complacent to me. Little bad news, you've got a lot of potential selling that can happen. So again, it doesn't always mean, as we see here, and we see lots of you know troughs here, maybe not this low, and we saw the market do pretty well the whole time. So none of this is conclusive, folks. You just add it together and you say, is this an absolute ideal time? to either be throwing new money into the market or to be expecting that we're about to sustainably mount into all-time highs. Well, these indicators and, and others would say, no, not right now. It's just not as good a looking a setup as we had right in here. It's certainly not terrible. As I showed you, the volume trend is still pretty supportive, but it's just not overwhelmingly positive. So I remain guarded and I'm really concerned about the state of trade.
Uh, if you didn't get a chance to read my log entry this morning, please do that. I quote a tweet from the president yesterday where he is claiming that the tariffs have been very, very good for the U.S. economy. If that means that next Friday, there was a rumor this week that next Friday the deal is going to be done, it won't be signed. But if the details from that deal say that lots of the tariffs or the majority of the tariffs are going to stay in force with China, I don't think that's going to be greeted all that warmly by the market. I actually think the administration believes that it is. And I'm beginning to wonder if the timing of next Friday is meaningful because by the following Friday, from what I understand, is the deadline to declare that imports of European automobiles are a threat to American security interests, believe it or not. And the president seems like he really wants to put tariffs on European automobiles coming into the U.S. If he does that, the market is not going to like it. I can say that with absolute confidence. Could be that they're hoping that a, a, we get a big rally on a trade deal with China to somewhat mute what they may be concerned about if he does follow through and put tariffs on German automobiles. I'm really speculating here. I just find some of these uh, timelines that we've been given the last few days to be quite interesting. When I read tweets like the one yesterday from the president that came right after a meeting where the Republicans, politicians in mass were pleading with him to get rid of the tit for tat tariffs, get rid of the steel and aluminum tariffs, and absolutely do not incite a tariff war with Europe. After that meeting is when that tweet came out. So folks, these are reasons that I'm concerned and I'm concerned that there's so much complacency around that if, if my concerns become reality, then I think we could see an abrupt move lower in the stock market. For yours and my long-term portfolios, the meaningful money, uh, general conditions do not dictate that we get excited about that potential, just like we really did not react to what happened in here because it's at odds with fundamental reality. Under these conditions, if we get this kind of sell-off that I think could happen, I'm not promising anything, but I can see the potential for it, right now it would be at odds with fundamental reality as well. And it would also be at odds with the political ambitions of the folks who would make this happen. So I would expect that that would wake them up very much like this did. Suddenly we had a very conciliatory attitude that helped this happen. Well, now we're kind of back to the attitude we had up here, which suggests something like this may happen. And that will bring back a conciliatory attitude, hopefully one that will stick. And then we're back to me showing you videos and talking about why I think we're in really good shape going forward for the foreseeable future. So I think there's a lot that can happen between now and then. That's what has me guarded in my commentary. Those of you who have brought in new cash, that's what has me stubborn with putting much of it to work just yet. I don't mind entering the market at higher levels if indeed conditions suggest it's a good idea. I love entering the market at lower levels, of course, when uh, conditions say it's a good idea. I will never exit the market when conditions say it's a bad idea, regardless of what I think about what may occur in the very short term. I'll leave it there. Thank you as always folks for watching and listening. Have a wonderful weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.